Hello there and welcome to another computer science video. In this video we're going to be looking at binary tree traversals. Before we do that we need to look and actually understand what is meant by a binary tree. A binary tree starts with the highest node being called the root node or the parent node and each subsequent child of the root node is classed as a subtree. Those to the left are called the left subtree and those nodes to the right are called the right subtree. What you see here is a balanced tree, meaning that all the nodes and their children are full. This may not always be the case. Different branches on a binary tree can have vast data structures holding lots of data and lots of pointers. Once we have our binary tree, the next thing that we need to do now is look at how we search through a binary tree. There are three different traversal methods that we're going to look at. One is a pre-order traversal, one is an in-order traversal, and one is a post-order traversal. When looking at all three traversals, we need to make sure that we follow three simple rules. We're either taking the node itself, we're either traversing the left subtree, or we're either traversing the right subtree. In a pre-order traversal, we're going to first take the node that we're looking at and write that down, and then we're going to traverse the left subtree, and then after we've finished traversing the left subtree, we're going to traverse the right subtree. So let's have a look at this on the binary tree that we were looking at before. The first step of the traversal is to write the node down that we are currently on, and that's always the root node, which is the highest node at the tree, which in this case is D. So I write D down and then I'm going to tick off the rule that I have completed. The next step is to look at the left subtree. So I move down to the left subtree and I start the rule again. This is vitally important. It's the same rule that you follow in every traversal. So because I've written the rule down again, I take the node and write that down, which is B. Once I've completed that, I move to the left subtree and then I start the rule again and write down the node, which is A. Now I've taken the node, I need to check the left subtree of A. Now it doesn't actually exist, but I'm going to check it off anyway. I'll check the right subtree of A. Again, it doesn't exist, so I check that off also. Once completed all the rules on the node, I move back up to the previous node. And then I can check the L of the B node. So the L being the left subtree. I've now completed and fully traversed that. And now the next step is to move on to the right subtree, which contains C. I write the rule down again and I take the node when write down C. Once I've done that, I check the left subtree. It doesn't exist. I check the right subtree and that also doesn't exist. Once I've completed all the rules, I move back up to the B node and check off R, which means I've completed all the rules at the node B. Then I move back to the root node itself and check the L part of that because now I've completed the left subtree of the node D. The next step now is to traverse the right subtree of the node D. And that points me to F. I write my rule down at F, which is node left right, and I write down the node at F itself. Once I've done that, I move on to the next rule, which is traversing the left subtree of the node F. And I write my rule down again. I start with the node and take the node E. And then I check the left subtree, which is non-existent. I check the right subtree, which is also non-existent. And that means I've completed the node left right rule at node E. Once completed, I move back up and check off the L part of the F node. And then I traverse the right subtree at G. I write my rule down again. I'll take the node first. Then I take the left subtree, which is non-existent. I take the right subtree, which is also non-existent again. And then I move back up to F. And that means I've checked off all the rules at F. The final thing to do is move back to the root node, which is D. And then tick off the R rule. This means that the pre-order traversal for this tree is D, B, A, C, F, E, and G. And that's all there is to it for a pre-order traversal. The only thing you need to remember for your exam is node left, right. The pre-order traversal should always have the node in the first position of the list. 
So what about an in-order traversal then? The in-order traversal has a slightly different rule. This time, the root node should be in the middle. So we start off with the left subtree first, then we take the node, and then we traverse the right subtree after that. So let's have a look at that in action. I write down my rule at the root node, because we always start at the root node, and then I'm going to traverse the left subtree first. So I'm going to look at B. I rewrite my rule down. I write left node and right, and then I apply the first rule, which is traversing the left subtree of B. So I go down to A. Once I go down to A, I rewrite my rule again, left node right, and then I'll check my left subtree, and there is nothing there. Then I go back up to A, and I write the node down. Then I traverse the right subtree, there's nothing there. So that means I've completed all the rules at node A. Once I've done that, I'll go back up to my previous node, which is B, and I have checked the whole of the left subtree of B. Now I'm at the node part of B, and I'll write that down. The next step is to check the right subtree next. I go to the right of B to C, and I rewrite my rule down. I check the left subtree at C. There's nothing there. I come back up and I check the node. I write that down. And then I check the right subtree of C. There's nothing there. Once completed all of the traversals at node C, I go back up to B and check the right off. Because I've done all the rules, I now move up to node D, or the root node, and I check the L part of D off. I've traversed the full left subtree of D now. The next step is to complete the node rule. So I write D down, and that's the next letter in my list. Now look at the final rule at node D, and that's the right subtree. So I'll move down to F. At F, I rewrite my rule, left node right, and I check the first one, which is the left subtree of F. So I go down to F, which is E, and I rewrite my rule there. And the next thing I'll do is I'll check the left subtree of E, which is non-existent. I take the node itself, which is E, so I'll write that down in my list. And then I check the right subtree of E, and there's nothing there. That means I've completed all the rules at E, and I move back up to F and check the left rule off. The next step at F now is to take the node itself, so I'll write F down in my list, and then I traverse the right subtree. I rewrite my rule down now at node G. I check the left subtree, which is non-existent. I then move to my node rule, I write down G in my list, and then finally I check the right subtree, which is non-existent. Once I've completed the rules, I move back up and tick the R rule off at node F, and then move back up to D and tick the R rule off at node D, finishing there. The final order for this, with an in-order traversal, should be A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Remember the rules for an in-order traversal. You take the left subtree first, then you take the node, and then you take the right subtree after that. So moving on to a post-order traversal. The root node here should come at the end of the traversal itself. We've seen now in a pre-order traversal, the node comes first, an in-order traversal, the root node comes in the middle, and post-order traversal, the root node will come at the end of the traversed list. So it's the same system as we've seen previously. I write down my rules, which are left, right, and node. I then move down the left subtree, continuing with the first rule. I rewrite my rule again, left, right, node, at node B. And then I traverse the left subtree again, from here, looking at A. Now I've done that, I'll look left again. There's no left subtree at A. So I tick that rule off, I look at the right subtree at A, there is none of those either, and therefore I go back up to the node itself at A, and I write that down after I've completed the left and right traversals at node A. Once completed, I move back up to B, and I tick the left rule off at B. The next rule then states that I have to traverse the right subtree first before I can take the node. So I move down to C, and rewrite my rule. I check the left subtree first, I check the right subtree next, both are non-existent, and then I move back up to the node of C, 
and I write that down. Once I've done that and completed all the rules at C, I move back up to B. Now you can see the rules here, I've ticked off the left rule, I've ticked off the right rule, and now I take the node at B. So I write that down. Once completed, I've done all the rules, and now move back up to D and tick off the left subtree rule. I've completed that now, and the next step is to traverse the right subtree next. Once I've moved down to node F, the first rule states that I must first check the left subtree. I move down to node E and I rewrite my rule, left, right, node. Once here, I'll check the left subtree from E and it's non-existent. I'll check the right subtree of E and that's also non-existent. And then I move back up and I take the node and write that down. I've checked off all the rules at node E, so I move back up to node F. I've traversed the left subtree now at F, so now the rule states that I must traverse the right subtree at F. I move down to G and I rewrite my rule, left, right, node. I traverse the left subtree at G, it's non-existent. I traverse the right subtree, it's non-existent. And then I go back up to the node itself and write that down. So I add G to my list. Once I've completed all the rules, I move back up to F I've completed the left subtree at F. I've also now completed the right subtree at F. So I'll take the node itself and I'll write that down. Once completed, I've done all the rules at F. So I move back up to my root node itself. Looking at the rules, I've completed the left subtree of D. I've completed the right subtree now of D. And the only thing to do now is now to take the node at D and write that down in my list. The final list should say A, C, B, E, G, F, and D. And that's a post order traversal of this tree. Remember the rules for a post order traversal. First, we traverse the left subtree. Then, we traverse the right subtree. And finally, take the node after all those rules have been completed. One other thing that you need to be wary of for your exam is if the exam board asks you about deleting nodes from a binary tree. Now this doesn't really have anything to do with traversals other than the fact that if they ask you to delete a node and then traverse it, it would change your answer for your traversal. So let's have a look at deleting node A for example. This is fairly straightforward because it is at the bottom level of our tree. I delete the node and I remove the pointer and it really is as simple as that. It gets more tricky if we decide to delete a node from a higher level. So what happens if I delete node B? Well, I can't just leave node C floating around because then that would also be deleted if I remove the pointer from B. So I need to reconnect C now and change its level in the hierarchy. So to do that, I would connect C to node D. And that's as extensive as we need to go in this first video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the 2016 specimen question where it asked us to convert a binary tree structure into a two-dimensional array. And that's quite confusing to get your head around, but that's what we're going to break down and have a look at. So hopefully you'll join us in the next video for that. Once again, thanks for watching. I've been John and I'll see you next time.